Well, God only left us one book. One book, not in a set of encyclopedias, but one book. And sometimes as you're reading through that book, you wonder why he gave us so much detail in so many sections when he could have said so much more someplace else. Well, in chapters 18, we found the dangers of jealousy and we saw God's ability to prosper and protect David. As you go through chapter 19 and 20, you kind of feel like God's gilding the lily. That is, giving us even more detail about relationships and friendships and love and the sacrificial ability of love. And we find that Saul told Jonathan to kill David and told his servants to kill David. We find Jonathan warning David even though he was going against his father and protecting someone that was not even a blood relative. Uh, we, we see that again all the way through chapter 19. We see the determination, if you will, of Saul to kill David. And we see the protection that uh, is given by uh, Jonathan. And uh, we, we know that uh, he's warning him on a regular basis as it goes through, all the way through chapter 18, 19, and 20, we find a real definition of love. We find it in the relationship between Jonathan and David. We find it between Micah and David. Uh, Saul's own daughter, Michael, uh, and how she loved David and was willing to risk her own relationship with her father in order to protect him, luring him down out of the window uh, to make sure that he was safe. We find David fleeing to Ramah and telling Saul, uh, telling Samuel rather, all of the things that had happened. And, and then in chapter 20, it's, it's like, why go through another whole chapter of this warning David well, I think God wanted us to understand the power of love. I want to think he wanted to, uh, us to understand the commitment that we have when we love. So here's a question for you. Do you love God? Do you love him enough to be sacrificial in that love? To be willing to give your service even though you may have something else that you could do? I think that Jonathan's love for David uh, is clearly expressed here. And as we go through these particular chapters, you know, we have to ask ourselves, why three chapters about this relationship of love? Michael, Jonathan, David. Well, I think God wants us to understand the strength of love. I think he wants us to know. I think he wants us to know about the protection of God as we see David protected over and over again. Sometimes, almost supernaturally, when servants are sent and they wind up prophesying. Sometimes when we see Saul himself taking control of, we see the sovereignty of God. And God is sovereign. He's on his throne. He can protect us and he can show us the power of love. His love for us when he sent his son Jesus to die for our sins. As I'm making this video, I'm sad to announce that Lois's brother, Dr. Great, uh, appears not going to be able to make a recovery from his brain aneurysm. Uh, they've turned him over to hospice. They believe he's had several more strokes and is not going to recover from uh, what he's gone through. And so I hope that you'll pray for his wife I hope that you'll pray for Lois and Diane and Merle and all of the children and grandchildren. Uh, he's been a good doctor to all of us, as well as a brother. He's a believer. We know that he's going to heaven. But uh, we hope that you'll pray for the family as they go through this difficult time of saying goodbye 
and uh, as Merle is being placed in hospice care, we pray that uh, God has already taken uh, his soul and spirit and that he's not suffering and that it's just a matter of his body dying now. But uh, we know that he's lived a good 80 plus years, almost 81 in the spring. And uh, we know that he's served and healed hundreds if not thousands of people from physical illness. And we know that when he gets to heaven, God's gonna say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you. Have a great weekend. Be sure to go to church. Pray for me. I'll be preaching at Silver Creek Baptist Church in Mill Springs. And uh, just pray that God would anoint the message and that God's will would be done and many people will make decisions. God bless you and have a great day. Well, how can you be sure you're going to heaven? My son said I should never end a message without telling people how they can be sure they're going to heaven. You can find it easily in just a few verses in the book of Romans. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Sin is anything that's displeasing to God. We all sin every day. By unclean thoughts, a quick answer to someone that's inappropriate, uh, whatever it might be, we all sin and we all fall short of the glory of God. And we know that the wages of sin are death. Romans 6.23 tells us that clearly. The wages of sin are death. We're all guilty of sin and we all deserve death. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, God demonstrated his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's it. That's, that's exactly how God showed his love. He allowed us to see that Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, died for us and rose again to prove that he had the power over death. Now watch this. How do we obtain this? It's one thing to know it. You can have it here in your head, but not down in your heart. You know, here's how we obtain it. If we confess and believe in our heart, God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. And it says believing it's considered righteousness, not our own righteousness, but Christ's righteousness. With our mouth, we confess. And it says, and, and when we confess, it results in salvation. In verse 13, it goes on and says, whoever will call upon the Lord shall be saved. So if you've confessed your sin, said, yes, Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I know that you died for my sins. I'm going to turn from sin and self and to you and to you alone then you can know for certain if you really meant it, really meant it, then you know that you have eternal life in heaven. I hope that you've prayed a prayer similar to that, that you've acknowledged Christ as your savior, that you've invited him into your life to be your Lord and your master, that you've turned from sin and self and received him to be the Lord of your life. And that's my prayer for you. Remember at the end of this clip, there's an opportunity for you to see the last lesson that we had, and also a clip that says how you can have peace in a broken world with the three circle illustration. It's a wonderful witnessing tool to share with others if they don't know Christ as Savior and to see how God fixed a broken world. God bless you and have a great day.